Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is John, the RPG Lord. So today we're going to talk about player comfort level. D&D lives from the experience and just like in Disneyland, we want everybody to have a good time. If one of your players does not have a good time, the whole game suffers. So it's important that you find out the individual comfort levels. Uh, what are the categories that you should sample their comfort? Well, we're talking about a medieval role-playing game, so there's obviously monsters and the horror aspect, but then there's, of course, relationship act aspects such as sex and romance. Or you know, we live in the day and age of social justice, so you should consider that as well. And there's mental and, and physical health. All of these are things that your players might not be comfortable with, and so it's important that you're sensitive to that. You can go online and look for an RPG consent form. That is definitely an option, but I have found by experience that it is better to talk about this as a group ahead of time. What are you comfortable? What are you not comfortable with? Uh, certain topics that... I will never tolerate at the table. I will never tolerate uh, sexual assault. I will never tolerate explicit torture scenes. None of that has place in my game. But uh, my comfort level for certain things is definitely a lot higher than for other people, so you need to be aware of that. As I said, talk about uh, spiders. A lot of people have arachnophobia, so if you have a game that is very heavy on in introducing spider enemies, you might want to be careful. Or Now, when it comes to relationships, you will have players going after NPCs, NPCs players going after players, or NPCs going after NPCs. That makes a good story. Be sensitive to it, but as always, I advise you to not be too graphic. Again, this depends on your group, but remember the experience is mostly for the players and you set up the storyline in the background. I advise you, especially with the sex stuff, to be not explicit. If you have a group that's very comfortable with that, then go for it, but I would, I would definitely be on the lookout. As I said, we have talked about social issues and other things. Uh, some people might not be comfortable with sexism or racism. However, as a GM, I know that some of these issues make excellent storylines. So if you want to talk about them in appropriate ways, if you want to include them in appropriate ways, then definitely do not let me stand in my way. Going back to what I said at the very beginning, you have to find the proper balance between the two. You have to find out what makes a good storyline, but what is not so offensive that your table feels uncomfortable. And it goes down to a good balance between. Read the room, read your players. If you can see them cringing, it's time to turn it down. And that counts for anything. So that's that's just how it is. You have to become a reader of people. What are some other topics here? Well, there's mental health or disabilities per se. In a normal world, these things exist. And if you're world building, then they will, should, will and frankly should exist in your world. If you manage to give a good moral question to your players that they have to solve within the adventure, then in my book, in my book, you have succeeded as a dungeon master because D&D &D is not just entertainment. I believe, and again, that's my own personal opinion. You can disagree with me that D&D &D and a good GM includes morality and morality decisions in them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And remember, there's only one RPG Lord. I wish you guys a good day. I see you in the next video soon.